we've all been blessed, amen, and, and we see in Ephesians chapter 3 that we've been blessed with, with spiritual blessings, and lest I forget, let me go ahead and pause, and, and this don't count against my time, and, and thank everybody that, that helped Pastor Ryan this week with the float for the parade. Those things just don't happen. Uh, there's been a lot of hours poured into that uh, uh, from, from different people, and I ain't going to start calling names because I'll leave somebody out, but thank you uh, for that hard work, and and that dedication, and, and so we just pray that the God will be glorified today in the praise. I've been blessed. Now, Paul's writing uh, to the church at Ephesus. He's, he's writing, and he begins to, to lay out uh, for, for the church there the, the spiritual blessings in Christ. He, he lays that out in Ephesians. And, and these blessings this morning that we have in Christ are not our finances. They're, it's not our fitness or how, how physically fit we are. And it's not our fame at all. You see, we inherit uh, these blessings from Christ. And, and when he gives us these blessings, he, he gives them to us for, for us then uh, to invest those blessings in the work that he's given us to do. So this morning, there's, there's three sources that I see in these verses. There's three sources this morning where our spiritual blessings come from. First of all, I'm blessed, and, and you blessed this morning. If you hear me and you are a believer, you claim to receive Christ, you, you are a child of God, you have been blessed by the work of God the Father. You've been blessed by the work of God the Father. We see here a plan that God had for these spiritual blessings. Well, the first of all, the first thing I see is the miraculous position that Christ has put us in. He has a plan for these blessings. And, and the first thing is, is the position that he put us in. I first want to back up to uh, verse 3 because it says in verse 3, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You see, this describes both the kind of blessing that he's giving out, but it also describes the location of the blessing that he's giving. It says that they're in heavenly places, the miraculous position of these blessings. And yes, you and I uh, can be in Christ because of the work of the Father. That's a great position to be in, isn't it? In Christ. I don't know of any other position that I would want to be in than being in Christ. And that's a miraculous uh, position. God has, has chosen us in Him. He has put us in Him. He, God the Father chose to put us in Christ. You know, we should thank God this morning for all our material, temporal blessings. We should. We should thank God for everything uh, that he's blessed us with in this life. These blessings that, that he's blessed us with are, are more than we deserve. Would you say amen? We don't deserve all the blessings that God has poured on out of us. But this morning, we ought to shout a glory, hallelujah, and a praise to God for the spiritual blessings that he's talking about in Ephesians chapter 1. Why is that? Because a new heart is better than a new car. Amen? A new heart is better than a new car. A new mansion in heaven is better than a palace on this earth. To feed on the word of God that he has given us is better than a filet mignon. Amen? And to be accepted and to be accepted and chosen uh, by God is better than the approval of man. What a blessing it is uh, to be chose of God and placed into the family of God. We're talking about a passage of Scripture, and we're going to get a little further and deeper into it in a moment. We're talking about a passage of Scripture that drove a lot of theologians crazy and drove a lot of Christians crazy and drove a lot of universities crazy. Can I tell you this morning, I'm not troubled at all by Ephesians chapter 1. Not at all am I troubled by this passage of Scripture. We've been chosen and placed into the family of God. Amen? 
We've been given spiritual blessing. We Christians this morning are in Christ, according to verse 3. We've been chosen in Christ, according to verse 4. We've been chosen. God chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world and everything that was in it. Amen. God chose us to, to be holy and blameless. At, in him, God also before him. In Christ, he predestined us to be adopted as sons through Christ. Christ's purpose is done according to his kindness. God will bless us according to verse 5. God will use our life to praise and worship him. According to these passages of Scripture in verse 6, God has freely, lavishly poured out his grace upon us according to verse 6, 7, and 8. We are greatly loved in Christ according to verse, uh, in, in the beloved according to verse 6. Uh, we have redemption in the blood according to verse 7. We have forgiveness of our trespasses and everybody in the house ought to say hallelujah this morning in verse 7. Uh, we have been made known the mystery of, the, of his will in verse 9. We have an inheritance according to his purpose and his will. We will be manifested uh, in his glory by what he is doing in us. Having believed the gospel, amen, we are sealed with him uh, by the Holy Spirit in verse 13. The Holy Spirit is the promise to those who believe in the gospel according to verse 13. And the Holy Spirit indwells our life in personally interacts with us according to verses 13 and 14. And because they are in heavenly places, we're talking about the spiritual blessings, because they are in heavenly places, they are protected unlike our temporal blessings. Now, some of us this morning are so troubled by this passage of Scripture, we can't even enjoy it. We're not going to solve this morning a theological debate. I'm just simply saying I thank God this morning for the position, the miraculous position that he has placed us in Christ. But the second thing we see in verse 4 is not only where he's placed us in Christ, in heavenly places, we see a miraculous perfection. Look at verse 4. At the end of verse 4 it says that we should be holy, and without blame, a miraculous perfection. We can be holy before God. Now, there's something we need to understand this morning. We're not going to stand before God in perfection down here. Nor can we, because we're still in the flesh. But because we are in Him. We can stand before him holy because it ain't us, it's him. Hey, some of us need to get in him, amen. Because that ought to bless your soul that, that you are wretched, low down, rotten sinner that Christ came to earth and died for, and now you can stand behold, before a holy, righteous God, blameless and holy before him because of what he's done in you. If it was up to you, you'd still be lost and on your way to hell this morning, but you're not. You've been placed in Christ because of him. We can be without blame before God. We are chosen not only for salvation, we are chosen to be holy and to live a holy, pure life. God's purpose, listen, is to bring us into the conformity of Jesus. And we can stand before God this morning because of what Christ did for us on the cross. In Christ alone, amen, our blame is removed. In Christ alone, our blame is removed and his righteousness is given to us, not our righteousness. Because what does the Bible say? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But we can stand before a holy God this morning because of his righteousness. God purpose, listen, of making us holy and making us adopted children. Hallelujah for adopted children is that we uh, have been chosen for a mission. We've been chosen for a mission. God's children would take on the, the family business, if you would, carrying out God's mission. Predestination. Do you ever ride by a building and see on that building 
such and such and children. You don't. You ride by those buildings and you see such and such and sons. Because, you see, it's a progression. We are we're being made into the image of God. We're being made into the, the what God wants us to be for him. And you see, God's children, we're going to take on the family business. Amen. What was the family business? God come to seek and to save whosoever was lost. He come to seek and to save the lost. Why? Because that was his mission. And what is our mission is to carry that message to a lost and a dying world, you see, and share with them that there is hope for them. There is a Jesus who loves them. There is a father who wants to place them into the family of God, and they can be adopted into the family of God. I thank God this morning for those spiritual blessings and the miraculous position that he's placed us in. But also this morning, I thank God for our standing through those spiritual blessings. I thank God for our standings and those spiritual blessings. As I mentioned earlier, the topic this morning has, has split churches. It's, it's split denominations. It's, it's split families. And, and it's split, 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 <laughs> bit and split families and friends. Scholars and theologians can't even agree. But here's what will help us this morning, I believe, that God is sovereign. Yes, God knew from the foundations of the earth who would receive him and who wouldn't. He's sovereign. He knows everything. That don't change the fact that we were born with a free will to reject him or to receive him. Everybody, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, you think God took his precious son, his only begotten son, and sent them to earth for whosoever, for, for, for you. or a maybe, How would you like to look your precious child in the face in the morning and tell them, well, honey, me and mama's going to heaven, but there's a chance that God didn't come to die for you and that you're going to die and go to hell. Bless your heart if you're teaching your children that. God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved for the remission of sins. Listen, his blood was shed for the entire world amen i'll never get to preach in a university because i'm a redneck that's okay but i'll never get to preach in a university because i don't have a doctorate degree that's okay I, I, I won't get to preach in a university because i believe that god died for so who, whosoever will amen but more important than that i'm a child of god and i've been covered in the blood this morning and so have you if you've ever received him God, listen, called us into his family. And there's no way that, that I'm going to try to argue with you or am I going to try to persuade you this morning. But here's what, I, here's what my belief is. Here's what my conviction is. That predestination is not about a person being predestined to go to heaven or a person being predestined to go to hell. I believe predestination by my conviction and by the way I read the Bible has to do with the position that we are in in Christ. God sent his only begotten son. He said before the foundation of the earth. He knew before you were ever born and how any sin that you was ever going to commit, he knew before the foundation of the world that man was going to be fallen. He knew that he was going to have to send his son to die on a cross for you. He knew that before the foundation of the earth and it was his will, it was his will that we all would be saved. Verse 5 says, we are adopted. Verse 5 says, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself. Listen, it's nothing we've done. We've been adopted into the family of God by Christ Jesus. We are sons this morning and daughters. Verse 6 says that not only have we been adopted, but we've been accepted to the praise and the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah this morning. We have been adopted and accepted. Again, being in Christ and chosen and accepted by him is way better than being accepted and approved by man. Amen. Quit worrying about what man thinks about you. Quit worrying about what the world thinks about you. 
You probably don't really want to know what they think about you. It'll drive you crazy and insane. But what we ought to be worried about as a church this morning, I told church Wednesday night, I think it was, what we ought to be worried about about, about this thing is, is we're preaching, we're singing, and we're serving to the audience of one. And who is that one? Christ Jesus. Amen? Every Christian is, is doing what he does and, and serving the Lord. Robin, you playing for the audience of one, Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, hey, youth pastor, you youthing because of, the, of one man, and that's Christ Jesus. Deacons, you ought to be deacon because of you doing it for the audience of one person. Everything we do is for Jesus because we've been placed in him, in Christ alone. Amen. Listen, we've been accepted. Not only that, we ought to praise him for these spiritual blessings. Verse 6 says, To praise of the glory of his grace, wherein hath he made us accepted in the beloved. To praise of the glory of his grace. Listen, adoption magnifies the greatness of God the Father. It, it magnifies that. Listen, that, that God might receive praise and glory because of his grace. Can I help us this morning? God's not receiving praise and glory because of what me and you doing. It's awful quiet. Y'all scared of predestination. Isn't it? it ain't because of, of what you've done for Christ. It ain't because of who you are. It's because of what he's done. Because of the great. Listen, we can't even enjoy being saved this morning because we're worried about everything else. And when God says, you ought to be praising me because of the grace uh, that I've given. Praise God this morning for his grace. Secondly, I'm blessed because of the forgiveness of God the Son. Verses 7 through 12 the, the, the first part of that's dealing with God the Father. The, the, the 7 through 12 is dealing with, with the Son. Forgiveness through the Son of God. His payment, verse 7. Look at verse 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood. We've been redeemed because of the work and, and the forgiveness of God the Father. The definition of redemption is to purchase or, or set free by paying a price. Through his blood was the price that he paid for us. Listen, there was a payment to be paid. You and I couldn't make that payment. He, Jesus uh, made that payment for us. His purpose, we see his purpose. He redeemed me and he redeemed you for a purpose. The Lord has a plan for me. He has a plan for everybody sitting in this room this morning. And from the foundations of the earth, he had a plan. Me and my buddy this week was in union was talking, and here's what he said. He said, I, I didn't care when I was in college. He says, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, therefore, I didn't try. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life, so, so I just didn't try. I just give up. Listen, I, I knew what I wanted to do and still didn't do it. But now that I see God's hand and I see God's plan, would it even matter? See, you and I need to get our focus off of us and get our focus on God. Because God, through his son Jesus that has redeemed us, has a plan for us. And it was there before the foundations of the world was ever formed. Before we were formed in our mother's womb, the Bible says, he knew you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts that are the plans that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God knew before the foundations of the world the plans that he had for you. But then we see his purpose, we see his plan, we see his performing. Verse 11, verse 11 says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God's performing his purpose. God's doing his purpose. Verse 12 says, to the praise of his glory. Verse 12, that he should be, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Last, I'm blessed this morning because of the faithfulness 
of God through the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 13 and 14. In whom you also trusted, after that you had heard the word of truth, that the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Have you noticed anything throughout this whole passage? to the praise of his glory. To the praise of his glory. But I've been blessed because of the faithfulness of God through the Holy Spirit, through his sealing. Through his sealing. The seal speaks of a finished transaction. You've been sealed. It's been stamped. You've been, I got a little secular. Robin, can you play it for me? I'll sing it. Signed, sealed, delivered. This morning, we've been signed, we've been sealed, and one day, hallelujah, because we've been sealed, we're going to be delivered to the very presence of God. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit. Then, we have been sealed, the being sealed speaks of security and protection. I got secular again. You can't play this one. You ain't never heard this song before. And I'm not going to mention the guy's name because I don't. It was hammer time. You can't touch this. Some of y'all don't know that. That was 80 stuff. Amen. Not only have I been sealed by the Holy Spirit, signed, sealed, and delivered, but I've been protected. Amen. Because you can't touch it. The devil can't. T I don't care how mad you get at me. I don't care how mad anybody gets at you. I don't care how mad the devil gets. Hallelujah. He's real mad, can I tell you? He's real mad. He can't touch us. Because we've been signed and we've been sealed. We're going to be delivered. We are protected by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm glad that we can go into this battle in this world knowing that God's protecting us. Because of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. But then the, the seal was a mark of authenticity. Genuineness. Being sealed by the Holy Spirit is, is authenticity. It's, it's genuine. It's not a knockoff brand. You know, there's a bunch of knockoff brands running around here these days. I got secular again. I went back to a Coca-Cola commercial. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. And can I say to us this morning that I believe the problem in the church is that that step's not wide enough. I believe the problem in the church today is this. We got too many people that's pretending. I'm not the judge. God's the judge. He's talking about the fruit. You've got too many people that's pretending. You've got too many people that's faking it. They, they, they wearing a knockoff gospel. And what we need is genuinely authentic. Ain't nothing like the real thing been covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, sealed to the day of redemption. We need genuine, born-again Christians serving him in the church. We need people to get real with God. We need people to get down on their knees before God. We need people to say, God, I'm here, and I'm giving it all to you. I want to be the real deal. God, I know you're the real deal. Listen, he delivered, amen, you and I. He's waiting on us as a church to deliver what he's left us to a world out there. But I like it that he's steadfast. Verses 14 says, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the prize, praise of his glory. That earnest is a, is a down payment. He's made the down payment, amen? And the earnest, the down payment is guaranteed that the rest of the deal will take place. 
The rest of this deal is going to take place. God has made the payment of Jesus Christ to save all who shall come to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. And one day he's coming back to, re to call the church of the living God, those who have accepted his promise. He's coming back to deliver us to God. And you know what's going to happen? We'll get a glorified body one day. All for the praise, according to verse 14, and the glory of him. Every believer in this building and every believer on this planet has been blessed by God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And we can surely say this morning that I've been blessed. I've been blessed. You've 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 been blessed. We've all been blessed because we are in Christ Jesus. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, for loving us. Lord, this morning we're, we're so thankful that, that we're your children. We've been adopted into your family accepted, left on a mission until you come. Lord, we pray that when you come, you'll find us faithful. You'll find us doing the business that you left your children to do. For your kingdom, for your glory, for your honor. In Christ's name.